several different people's property, but you see no real, you know, egress entrance ways that, you know, no common roadway or anything, you know, so this is just, you know, poor planning as, as, at its best, okay? And I'm sure it was wonderful, you know, when it was the manor, um, you know, situation, you know, the, the, the patroon situation, I'm sure it, because, you know, all these people had to cooperate, you know, but, you know, they claimed that, the, you know, when it was a patroon system, you know, Thorson claims that all they did was, you know, take all the rocks out of the ground. And it wasn't until these properties were sold off to these people in, you know, the, the time of the survey here, 7090 or whatever it was, okay, that they started actually building the stone walls, which I find hard to believe, okay, because there is no reason why you would do any of this stuff. Delano goes back, okay, he, he, at the end of this lecture here, he talks about another area in New Hampshire, New Hampshire, where they had the same kind of situation. There is no, no, um, you know, current, you know, it's all covered by woods over there and there's wall, you know, he doesn't know because he says, you know, in this area here, there's got to be a wall. Um, he shows this, okay, of Concord, New Hampshire. And, you know, this is all covered by wood. Obviously, it was abandoned at some point in the past, probably during, you know, what we discussed when everybody mass exodus from this area, maybe even earlier in the 1800s, okay? But you can see, this is an extremely well-planned area. This is what you would expect from somebody doing a survey or, you know, and, you know, you have common road, common access to all places, you know, uh, you know, public waters, you know, whatever it is, you know, you can see how extremely well planned this is at an early date, as, you know, he refers to Delano. So, you know, this one was obviously planned by the colonists and, and settlers, you know, to, to create this community, and at some point they abandoned it. So he's trying to associate it to be like the same thing as this thing at Van Rensselaer where he lives over there, okay? And I'm telling you, this is ridiculous. Look, how many problems you have here too with the water supply. You sell some streams or whatever it is. Well, what about people who don't have streams? How are they gonna get access to water? You own this property or whatever. You haven't, you know, you're gonna dig a well or whatever. You know, in 1790, there was a lot of well digging going on. Even if you could, it could be on the side of a mountain or something like that. You know, you have to dig like hundreds and hundreds of feet to get to a well. So this is ridiculous, this puzzle piece, amoeba-like areas or whatever it is. And, you know, in my assessment, the only reason why Van Rensselaer would do such a thing is if the walls were already there, okay? And it made it very easy for him to, uh, you know, apportion these pieces of land. And you notice they they seem to be sort of, uh, you know, a relatively regular size. Although, if you look at them, you could see some are bigger than others or whatever it is. And look, if I was a landlord and I was leasing pieces of this land here, would I really want people to be erecting stones everywhere? What if I wanted to expand the land? This is more or less a permanent thing, okay? Here's the explanation they give, you know. You know, they built these walls and, you know, then in order to keep the cattle in, they just, you know, they put a split rail fence up. You know, look, this is ridiculous, okay? First of all, Thorson says it's only 50 years. So how much wood will you need for 50 years worth of, of split rail fence? You're going to tell me you built a wall, a stone wall, then you put up a split rail fence to keep your cows in or whatever it is. Couldn't you save yourself all the tremendous amount of work? How easy do you think it is to put up this fence? How easy do you think it is to put up this wall? Why would you do that? I'll tell you one thing. If I was the settlers and colonists taking all this rock out of here, the first thing I would be doing with these rocks is making roads. That's what I would be doing. I wouldn't be building stone walls. I'd be putting up wooden fence. Lickety split. These, these, oh, they rotted. That's what they, oh, they rotted, you know, so that was no good. Rotted? Really, in 50 years, oh, you couldn't replace these simple split rail fence bases over here? You know, wood was a premium or whatever. Well, I can tell you in the patroon system that we're talking about over here, you could be sure that the manor of Van Rensselaer had to supply all these people with wood, and they had to pay for it, okay? 
off the rest of his land where there was some wood available. Okay, so they deforested this part, you know, they're still going to need wood. So this is organized wood getting for all of these areas, okay? And there was a lot of these manor systems going. I'm sure after Van Rensselaer, everybody else said, hey, well, hey what, you know, look, the stone walls were already here, okay? And it gave Van Rensselaer a way in to this whole situation without having a professional survey done, without having the land. I mean, look, how simple is this to create complete uniform geometric shapes what do you need a rope a chain or whatever it is even if you didn't have a survey you could do this easily okay and a lot of times you know if you understand about topography and you know topographical design and all this kind of shit look you know you're going to design something you know with egress and access and you know you're not going to do all of this stuff this is crazy so what I think happened here, and here's my opinion about what happened, when Van Rensselaer built his manor house, he knew all these walled-in areas. It was a simple matter to divide them all up into these, you know, even areas because of all the patterns of the walls were irregular, but it made it, you know, an, a, gave him an ability to create these areas, okay? And at some point in the lecture, Delano shows a... Uh, 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 topographical map and you can see within these walled areas here other stone walls that you know were incomplete or didn't go anywhere so how easy would it to be to say look if I just you know if we have this existing internal stone wall here and just finish the rest of it to complete an area like this that would be easy work to do since the whole area was basically walled in already Okay, so my point is, is Van Rensselaer found this area with all the stone walls in it already. It gave him a way to create these small walled-in areas all over the place so he could put his indentured servants and slaves in there or whatever he wanted in there, okay? Otherwise, he would have done it like this, okay? What, you know, what are you trying to say? One of, one of the richest and smartest Dutch guys in American history, real smart and shrewd guy, said, yeah, you know, let's do it this way. You know, hey, boss, what do you want me to do? You want me to create, like, even squares? Like, nah, you know what? I'm tired of that even square stuff. You know what? Uh, you know, I like amoebas. That's what I like. I like puzzles. Make, make it like a puzzle. That's the way to do it. It's ridiculous. It's absurd, okay? Me and Rensselaer found all these walls here. They were here already. And what he did was he put all these people in here because it was easy. It was a piece of cake, okay? Not this reason that Delano gives, you know, the reason why that is the way that it is and it's not like it is in New Hampshire is because we're just messed up. We're screwed up. You know, New York is screwed up. This is his, you know, scholarly evaluation. This is his scholarly assessment of this area, okay? You buying that? Okay? It's nonsense, okay? He doesn't know what he's talking about, okay? And I do, all right? This is ridiculous. Okay? Nobody would plan this. He even ran Rensselaer if he was trying to make a community out of it. Okay, the walls were there already, and he said, oh, good, let's, you know, we got all these areas with walls already in there, go right in there. Okay, so no more BS, okay, from you, Delano, or, you know, or, or Thorson, whoever, you know, no more BS, bro. This is how it really is, okay? Take it from somebody who knows about this kind of uh, planning, okay? You don't know what you're talking about. You're making stuff up. You're making a fantasy. It's all emotional. I know these people. I know. No, you don't, my friend. Okay? If the walls could talk, they would tell you, hey, dopey, we were here already. What are you talking about? All right? So, forget about this. Okay? His lecture, Green Mountain Academy, like you could throw this in the garbage, okay? Because the, the story that, you know, and he doesn't give a story, it's just, ah, ha, ha, they're all screwed up. That's the reason why. 
Okay, and like I said, there's vast areas of upstate New York and New England completely forested and over with walls just like this in those areas. And mainstream academia, their assumption is, is that, you know, hey, it's obviously got to be just like this. But we just don't have any documentation. We don't have any land surveys or anything from those areas. But I'm sure it was the same situation because we have this. Okay, it's a chicken in the egg thing, a cart before the horse and all this kind of stuff. Okay, this is nonsense if you buy into his assessment of this. He doesn't know what he's talking about, and I do. The walls were already there, okay? And it gave Van Rensselaer and the rest of the manor owners an easy way to install people into their property here for their purposes of indentured servitude or whatever kind of, you know, horrible nonsense they were up to, okay? So okay guys, just wanted to get this through here, okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna put a link to this lecture, okay, in the description and any other concomitant information, uh, you know, as uh, you know, on this particular segment here, okay? So think about this, okay? And if you're an engineer, an architectural to topographical designer, topographical cartographer, whatever it is, you look at this and tell me, okay? that this wasn't already there, okay? People had already been there for 100 years on Van Rensselaer's property. What, they just started building stone walls in 1775? Because Thorson says so? I don't think so, okay? His whole contention is ridiculous anyway, okay? The whole year without a summer and all the volcanic eruptions put an end to farming in the Northeast and created a mass exodus and a serious decrease in the population. By 1816, there was like nobody there. Okay? And Van Rensselaer found all this stuff. Okay? He found all the walls there and he put them to good use. You didn't have to pay big, you know, land survey costs and all this kind of stuff. He just did it himself. And so did the rest of the manor owners in similar situations. Okay? All right, guys. That's it for this one. Uh, thanks for watching. And, oh, by the way, um, I'm going to put into my playlist and also um, throw into a couple of my videos... The, uh, this fella, Paleo Mountain Man, um, I subscribe to him. He's showing some great videos of stone walls in Vermont. He lives in that area, and it's very interesting, the stuff that he's found out about those walls there. I'm paying close attention to what he's saying, and I think you should too. So I'm going to put a link to subscribe to his channel in the description there. Please take a look at his videos. He's got some interesting stuff to show and more to come. Okay? Alright guys, thanks a lot, and till the next time, peace.